Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, my name is Arach David James. I work for Namati, uh, Namati's Community Land Protection Program. <coughs> Just today's theme, theme is um, we work to support communities protect their lands. Uh, and um, as you may all know, climate change, food and water insecurity, population growth, limited natural resources have led to land grabs uh, globally. At Namati, we have categorized land grabs into large-scale uh, land acquisition by international investors, um, and then at national level by elites, and within the community by the stronger members grabbing land from the weaker ones. Now, all of this put together um, pushes for the for the need to empower communities to document their customary land claims. At Namaki, we have drafted um, a process that we support communities to follow. And we believe that if communities follow this process to the end, they will be able to protect their lands. Now, this process is a step by step, and we have um, the following steps that I'll go through briefly for you. The first one is laying the groundwork where we work to support communities firstly appreciate and own the process to protect their land. Um, they do a visioning to be able to uh, recap how they've used their land previously, how, they, how the trend is currently and what is the likely future and what shall they do to ensure that they have a prosperous future. Um, at this stage, we agree with the community on the terms of reference, what will be the terms of the facilitator, what will he do and what will the community do to ensure that the process goes on smoothly. Now, after that, we go into the core of the process, which is a, which is a strengthening of the community um, governance of land and natural resources. So here is where we do the bylaws process, where we support communities to document all of their bylaws, all of their oral rules, document those and have them written down. Uh, bylaws are to talk of governance of their natural resources, decision making, and all of that. We'll look um, at the bylaws process uh, in the next slide. Uh, once they do that, they go, we support them to document their land where they harmonize their boundaries, draw maps. Um, resolve conflicts, make agreements, uh, and document all of their boundary uh, agreements. We believe this put together can be used by the community to pursue, to pursue legal registration. Now this hugely depends on the legal framework uh, in a given country, uh, but a lot of countries have a legal framework for communities to use, uh, but other countries are still in the process of um, preparing this so for, for countries that have, we believe this is a good tool that the community could use to register. But for those that don't have, communities would use this as tools for self-governance, to govern their lands. This, would, this is an empowerment process. Uh, even if before um, legal recognition, the community starts to live sustainably, starts to live by their bylaws, and, and they're able to manage their natural resources. Now, after legal recognition, we support communities to prosper. So the communities um, figure out how they will live, how they will relate with the investors, how they will support livelihoods, and things like that. So in a nutshell, that is the process we have developed for um, the communities uh, that we support. Now, as the core of this discussion today, we'll look at the core um, of our work, which is strengthening community governance and which is mainly drafting of bylaws. Now, we believe the bylaws that we draft uh, will um, tackle these three challenges I have listed. We know that it's dangerous to give our community documentation for their land without, take, without ensuring that the community is empowered enough to, to have accountability mechanisms and the community is not strengthened to govern their own lands. The, um, communities have oral rules. They have some bylaws that they live with, but these are oral. 
So this provides for opportunity for manipulation by, by the greedy members of the community. Anything that is not documented can easily uh, be manipulated. Um, there are lots of intra-community discrimination, bad practices that weaken land rights of the minority groups. So we do the bylaws to try to uh, deal with the three challenges. So the bylaws for, are drafted to ensure good governance within the community, management of natural of, of the land and natural resources, um, linking the plan, the, 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 the plan the community has, their vision, linking it to the bylaws, to how you know to, to governance, linking their map they've drawn. To, to the governance issues and natural resources management and how a team of the governing, um, how, how the governing structure will work and how shall it relate with the community. So we've, we have a series of meetings that the community goes through to be able to develop and draft their and document their bylaws. The first one is a community-wide um, brainstorming and shouting out of all the bylaws that they remember from the past, documenting all of those oral rules that the community knows, okay, putting all of that down. So as a facilitator, we try our best to ensure that the community shout out as we document all of that. We don't leave out any and we ensure that this remains in the community's terms, you know, how they put it. Now, once we have gathered all of that, the next meeting is to provide legal education for the community to know what the legal framework looks like, uh, land right issues, human right issues, and things like that. Um, once the community has done the legal education, then we ask them to critique the bylaws that they had shouted in light to the education they've had. So then they revise, they critique, they remove, they add, and it's at this second stage that we ask the community to start to think about their future. What's the vision like? And how will they ensure that the, the, the bylaws they are drafting take care of the, the, the trend, the, the, the future? We also um, separate the community into the different social groups, the women, the men, the youth, the leaders, so that in their different social groups, they start to critique and ensure that the bylaws take care of their rights. Now, once all of that is done, we have we, we, we consolidated a number of bylaws. We 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 take this for legal um, um, for legal check. This could be done by a legal expert or by the the the, 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 the facilitating organisation to ensure that the bylaws align with the national law. The bylaws uh, don't contra contradict any um, 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 human rights. Um, provisions. So, so once that is done, then the bylaws are brought back to the community together with the, with the feedback from the legal uh, check, the legal uh, 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 analysis, and so the community is asked to revise their bylaws, issue, you know, considering the, the, the feedback from the legal experts, the legal checks. Now, once the community has revised their bylaws um, with all of this taken care of, the community is facilitated into adoption of their bylaws. This is done by consensus or supermajority votes. And once the community has adopted, uh, they start to implement their bylaws. And normally, what happens first is the bylaws are implemented to elect a governing council, a management council, a structure to govern the land. And that's normally what the community does first. And that is, is, is the process for bylaws drafting. Um, the bylaws are generally categorized into three major themes. Uh, the bylaws on uh, governance of land and natural resources, this uh, take care of community definition, land ownership, how the governing council shall work and how decisions shall be made, as you, as you may read as, as listed. Uh, the second category is rules on, on, on management of natural resources. Oh, sorry, the first category was the rules on governance. The, the next one is on management of natural resources, food resources, water, community forests and grazing lands and things like that. How shall they manage all of those? And finally, social and cultural rules. So this process revitalizes customs. OK, 
okay and this provides for my harmonizing of customs and the, and the state law so you have the opportunity to ask the community to revise their their own their, their bylaws their rules in line with the with what the state law says so this provides for that opportunity and as from experience communities are likely to start to mention their social rules and start to mention their you know custom rule, cultural rules and it's good that you ensure all of this that has to do with land is captured when you talk of the bylaws uh, for, for, for land management. What are the potential outcomes? Empowerment, uh, protection of women and the minority rights, since this will be enshrined in their bylaws, uh, down, downward accountability by the leaders, the bylaws will ensure a greater uh, democratic uh, in participation in, in, in decision making, increased conservation, you know, how they, how they will manage their natural resources and how, how will they ensure sustainability. Like I say, this also provides for aligning of the customary rules, the national law, and then a stronger foundation for prosperity in the future for the community. Um, how do you ensure that the women's rights are protected? Now, as facilitators, we try our best to marry the customs uh, and formal laws so, so that we bring in the formal laws that protect women's rights and ask the community to revise their bylaws to ensure that the women's rights are protected. During the, during the drafting of the, the bylaws, we also ask communities, we train the leaders on, the, on why it is necessary that the rights of the minorities are taken care of. We also actually, um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, separate the groups, the, the, the community into different groups so that the, um, the different groups, the women groups, discuss the bylaws in light to, 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 to their interests and ensure that their interests are taken care of. That, in a way, gets enshrined in the bylaws and that's protection. And finally, to ensure that the protection is in the implementation by creating probably watchdogs, groups that monitor implementation of the bylaws, training the leaders, the police and government officials, training all of them and together with the customary uh, leaders on, on why protection of the minority groups is essential for land rights. Um, the, the, the final part is, you know, drafting of bylaws is one part. The next part is actually implementation of the bylaws. So we've brought some of the uh, things that, you, that we've put in place to ensure that the bylaws are implementable. One, ensuring that the process is participatory, that everyone participates, uh, dividing the, you know, ensuring that there are different social groups writing and critiquing the bylaws, probably going at village by village level so that everyone is reached in the process of bylaw drafting, involving all leaders in the process, especially those that have to do, that have been playing a part in land management, ensuring that all of the officials and, and, and leadership structures in the community have copies of the bylaws that have been created uh, and then in the in the bylaws add um, uh, add steps actions to ensure that the bylaws will be uh, implemented uh, and then a watchdog group that monitors uh, the bylaws uh, uh, implementation now as we talk of uh, natural resources we know that has to do with, with, with some fees and fines if the bylaws are in place. So a, a way to manage finances is very crucial if the bylaws are to be uh, implemented. And then to ensure that the bylaws remain, uh, you know, to, to take care of the future, it is very useful that the community is able to revise their bylaws according to the trends. Um, thank you so much. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.